Welcome to the 90 hour build of insanity. Okay, um, where to start? This is partway through the neck blank, and it's amazing. Well, once I've taken all the clamps off and uh, planed through, it should be amazing. I'm gonna grab another piece of rosewood. I have enough room to slice a section of rosewood off the outside edge of this, and then use that for the central section. Uh, however, that is slightly risky, and uh, I have a lot of rosewood. So, use the rosewood. When you have a multi-laminate multi neck, many people will just glue a whole bunch of rectangular pieces of wood together and be done with it. And that is the easy, quick way of doing it. However, a guitar neck is wedge-shaped, period. And if you have a central section, and sometimes only the central section, wedge-shaped as well, it makes the whole thing look more pleasing. And uh, for that purpose, I have a wedge-shaped piece of uh, mahogany here, and I'm just gonna use the masking tape and super glue trick to uh, essentially make this piece of rosewood uh, wedge-shaped. I'm then gonna put it through the planar thicknesser, which is gonna take the high ends off, and uh, we will end up, once we've removed it all, with a wedge-shaped central section. And, uh, It'll be awesome, of course. Uh, masking tape, super glue. Here's the accelerator. Masking tape, masking tape, hat. Masking tape and super glue is it's very it's very strong. It's a good, it's good. So just a couple of strips will do perfectly fine. And then I'm going to match the two strips up. Double check that actually, there's a slight angle there. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I also want to think about the, the grain. So yeah, it'll be going through that way. The grain's going out that way, so the cutters will be going correctly. There we go. Super glue in the center. Accelerator. And that's it. That should hold, it will hold, under immense strain. Okay, down to the planar thicknesser. This is now 
I've double checked, it's all got a good finish and uh, it's wedge shaped. It's also twice the depth that I need. Uh, but I'll save the other half for another guitar at some point in the future. Isn't the masking tape and super clip trick just insane? Ah, there we go. No residue. Wedge shaped. Beautiful. Check this out. So, um, not really a problem, but something to be aware of and is of interest. Now, I said I was going to plane this joint. And remember, we have already planed that. Uh, in the end, I had to use a scraper just to clean it up because there was some uh, residue from the uh, last gluing process, really. What we have, though, is because we've planed a curve into the other side, so the side with the uh, multi-laminate veneer in it, this wood has decided to try and curve itself uh, straight again, which is actually the exact reason why we're making a multi-laminate neck in the first place. Now, this piece of rosewood is going to go in the middle and we're going to have two pieces of, of maple with a curve that will be clamped to uh, a central section which will straighten everything out. The issue is will be ameliorated basically it will be fighting against itself uh, and the uh, we will end up with a status quo that is strong that is what i am talking about Obviously, I am minus the extra black, white, black purfling as of yet. But that curve in there, that is what I'm after. If you look at the grain in the rosewood, you can see why it has happened, actually. The grain at this end is going in, and it's doing the same thing at this end, and that's making it cup. Do I put the veneers in or not? Of course I put the veneers in. It's the design, it's got to be done. And do I clamp it all up in one go or not? Now that, that's the question. I'm particularly excited now. I've been away for a couple of days. The neck has been sitting on my workbench. The neck blank, the neck blank, has been sitting here on my workbench, getting cured and uh, under tension and pressure, and clampage. And uh, that's it. I am. I'm going to quickly unclamp, plane excess away, and see what it actually looks like. Because of the heavy glue that I'm going to be getting rid of, especially on the other side. I'm going to chisel away as much as I can, but then I'm going to use this beastie. 100 years old, if it's a day. What it does have is the blade has been sharpened at a 30 degree angle, uh, which means that basically it's got uh, a steeper bevel, therefore the edge is stronger and it'll cope with glue a little bit better. Plus wood, nice and comfortable. So I've used the uh, little coffin smoother to get this down to uh, to a point where there is practically no glue. Anyway, uh, I do need to get a jointer now to get that perfectly flat because that was a, well, it's the wrong plane for that. Bring on the number seven of awesomeness. I love planes too much. So this is the back of the neck, 
and you can actually see more flame on this side. I'm not done. There is more planning to do. I do want to get this square to the edges uh, on the side where I'm going to be gluing. And then I'm going to leave this to sit for a week, at least a week, and see what happens. <laughs> it is so hard sighting down this because of the curves in the uh, multi laminates. It looks like the whole thing's just completely off. While I am putting this in the bench dogs, I am not putting it under huge amounts of uh, tension. I am planing, now that I've got most of the excess off, I'm, I'm not putting too much pressure on it. I am also not squeezing it too much because that would push the middle of the blanket up. It means I take more out of the middle and then when you release the tension, it, it uh, cups and it's just not good. So, uh, there you go, planing 101. You all knew that anyway. At this stage, the neck blank is chilling out in the corner, hopefully not moving. It's just, I'm really happy with how that turned out. And I have come back to the outer shell, for want of a better word, and I need to carve this Quite frankly, at this stage, one, hitting it with a chisel and a mallet is so nerve-wracking. The more material I take away, the more uh, delicate it becomes. And I'm, I'm really worried <laughs> about um, hitting it on a weak point and having some short grain just snapping. I don't want that. So, and I also want to move this along a little bit faster and uh, keep the pace going and keep the build interesting and uh, as such I am moving on downstairs I'm going to grab an angle grinder with a saber tooth cutter a fine saber tooth cutter the larger ones are insane I'm going to carve away the internal carve of this it's not going to take that long it's going to be very dusty but uh, a little bit of dust for a, a quick payoff is, is worth it. And the thing is, you can be very gentle with those machines, and uh, I'm less worried about the angle grinder ripping out and grabbing a chunk of, uh, uh, and breaking something than I am doing it by hand, which is weird. I'm enjoying this. Okay, this is externally looking much the same as it has for a while now, but we are definitely getting there. And what it's making me think, really, is that I need to carve the outer shape too, because really, I, I just wanna see how it's, I just wanna see how it's gonna look. I am gonna do the excess, or sorry, the external bits uh, again with the with the angle grinder and then random orbital sander. However, the final result is that what I'm thinking is each one of these arms, or uh, I don't even know what you'd call it. Basically, each one of these is going to be triangular in shape, carved by hand. It needs to look organic. If I ran a router around each of these things and put a chamfer on each one, it would look machine made. It would look well, boring. So, uh, yeah, I want it to look as thin as and, and as delicate as possible. So I'm going to remove as much material as I can while keeping some strength and then uh, carve it into diamond shapes, but with an organic sort of feel to it. And uh, then once that external piece is made, then we will shape the rest of the body uh, to fit and see what happens. I'm, I'm playing here, but I'm playing and having great fun.
<laughs> the camera's a little bit dusty. All right then, this is looking pretty awesome. And uh, I'm very happy. So, well, you can see that my, what I tend to do is angle grind, which is relatively rough, especially when you have the safety guard on. Uh, it tends to get in the way and it means I don't get quite as clean cuts as I would normally like. And then I go back later with the random orbital sander and then that allows me to sort of normalize, normalize the shapes and sort of smooth it out. This is obviously a whole hell of a lot easier when you have a solid body. What I'm thinking of doing from here, I want to do some sort of a triangular cross section where everything meets in the middle. It's a half alien movie in the way that it's eating the guitar, but it's also kind of Elvendar or something like that, really. The end result is gonna be beautiful. And uh, uh, this is me talking, but it, it is, it absolutely is. Now, you will have noticed during that whole process, I kept on pushing down and checking and checking. This is really strong. It's, there is now some give, which is to be expected. I'm gonna be taking away even more material. It is going to be delicate, but it's not gonna be delicate. Um, but the carving is relatively even. There's, it's, I need to take away a little bit more here, I suppose. And I'll do that by hand. The whole thing. I'm pretty, pretty happy. Uh, now, this is an organic feeling thing. You will notice that I have gone to a hard line on the edge, on the corner, and I'm not going to keep that hard line. I, I don't think I'm going to keep that hard line. That was to allow me to have a, a standard shape and, and um, so that it feels like a guitar, but I'm gonna round those over so that it looks more, more organic. We're, we're going organic, we're going, you know, trailing vines and trees and stuff. I'm off to find some coffee. Thank you for watching, thank you for being uh, so awesome and for your support. Please click like and subscribe if you haven't consider supporting our patreon where this build the entire build with Almost raw very lightly edited footage is there. So if you're enjoying what you're watching here There's like twice as much on patreon, but uh, Yeah, let us know in the comments below what you think and uh, Well, go make some sawdust after you've watched the videos, of course See you soon Goodbye. For now. The correct formula for uh, uh, how many guitars or tools a man should have is X plus one. X being the number you currently have. <laughs>